I'm finding as many reptiles and amphibians as possible. Since it's currently October, these animals search for food in order to brewmate during the winter. I started to look for reptiles and amphibians by heading to a local pond. At first, I was able to find a snake shed next to the water. Finding a fresh snake shed like this is a good indicator that there might be snakes basking. Not far from the snake shed, I saw a snake in the water which the shed might have belonged to. Unfortunately, it was pretty far away so I couldn't get a good look at it. Northern water snakes like this one normally hunt their prey in the water, feeding on aquatic animals. These animals normally include fish and amphibians. Also in the water, I was able to spot a couple of northern green frogs. These frogs generally live in ponds, marshes, and other aquatic environments. Their diet often includes bugs and smaller amphibians. Northern green frogs use their sticky tongues to help grab their food. When under threat, they jump in the water and conceal themselves in the mud. Next, I headed into the forest to find a different group of species. First, I found this baby wood frog. Wood frogs can be identified by the stripes across their eyes. They are also very good at blending in with their surroundings. Since I wanted to find salamanders, I flipped some logs. The first amphibian I found was a red-backed salamander. This one exhibited the red stripe normally found on their back. I was also able to find another one tucking its head under its body. Animals do this to prevent predators from attacking the head. Alongside the other red-backed salamanders, I was also able to find the lead-backed face. While this is still a red-backed salamander, it's a lot darker than the characteristic individual. Color variation within a species is known as polymorphism. The last salamander I found after flipping logs was this northern two-lined salamander. These salamanders are well adapted to living in streams. As a result, I normally find them in or next to the water. Since this salamander was muddy, the lines running down the back weren't fully visible. Before the sun went down, I was able to see this eastern American toad sitting on a rock bath. These toads are normally nocturnal, so since it was starting to get darker, I returned at night to find more of them. After walking around at night, I was able to find more American toads. These toads are characterized by their stout bodies and short legs. American toads can also produce a bufotoxin to stop many predators from eating them. If their toxin doesn't work, American toads will also puff themselves up to look bigger. The next animal I found was a fowler's toad. These toads look similar to American toads, but have smaller, wart-like bumps on their back. These toads use their colors to blend in with their surroundings. Animals like snakes, birds, and mammals eat toads regularly. I was also able to find a snake crawling around in some rocks. It turned out to be the eastern hognose snake. When hognose snakes are threatened, these snakes spread a hood. Alternatively, eastern hognose snakes use their shovel-like nose to dig in the soil to get away. Even though they have a very mild venom, they are completely harmless to humans. 